With so much craziness happening in these big cities over the last two years, I'm getting more and more calls from people saying, Trent, I want to move to a really small town in Idaho, specifically Kellogg or somewhere in the Silver Valley. And I'm here to tell you why that might be a really bad decision. Stick around. Hey guys, my name is Trent and I'm a Realtor here in Idaho. If this is your first time to my channel, welcome. And if you're interested in learning everything about Idaho, specifically where to eat, sleep, work, play, buy real estate, then this is the channel for you. So make sure you tap the subscribe button, hit the notification bell so every time I come out with a new video, you get notified. Now guys, I'm serious. I get calls, text, emails every single day from people just like you that are watching this channel, but they need a little bit more information to decide if Idaho is the right place for them or how to get moved here, and I absolutely love it. So if this is you and you're serious about getting moved to Idaho, go ahead and reach out with a call, text, email, day, nights, weekends, it does not matter. I absolutely love helping people get moved here. It's what we're here to do, and we happen to be very good at it. So today we are talking about why moving to a really small town, particularly the Silver Valley, is a not so great idea. And honestly guys, I've been here for 30 years. I have no problem telling people the honest truth about what it's like living up here. Idaho is a very unique place and it is not for everyone. And the last thing I want is for someone to move here not knowing what to expect and one, either having to move back to where they came from because they don't like it, or two, deciding, you know what, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to change Idaho to more of what I like. We don't want that. A lot of the locals are a little bit out of shape from all the people moving here, but as long as you're here to keep Idaho preserved, to keep it good, we don't mind you coming. And honestly, after watching this video, guys, I want to know what you think. If you think that I'm overstating something or understating it, if you could live in a place like this or not, I wanna read it in the comments. I do look at those every single day. I try to reply to as many as I can, and I really appreciate the feedback. So let's get started. Now, for those of you that don't know much about Idaho, the Silver Valley consists of several very small towns that make up Shoshone County. The first is Pinehurst, then you have Smelterville, Kellogg, Wardner, Osborne, Silverton, Wallace, and Mullen. Now Kellogg is by far the most populated town in Silver Valley with 2,500 residents. Like I said, it's about 40 minutes east of Coeur d'Alene and you just have to drive over the 4th of July pass to get there. Now what made Silver Valley a really desirable place to live initially was all of the towns were built around the mining industry. Up there you had the Bunker Hill Mine, which actually was the world's most abundant silver mine and ran for over a hundred years. Now the big attraction is the Silver Mountain Ski Resort, their water park, and their golf course. And what really put Silver Mountain on the map is instead of having to drive all the way up to the mountain, you just drive to the base, get in the gondola, and go 3.1 miles over Wardner, the town of Wardner, all the way up to the top of Silver Mountain. It was actually the world's longest gondola for a really long time, and I think China now has one that's like nine kilometers long, so beat us by a little bit, but you know, it's still pretty cool. Now, before I go and tell you what a terrible idea it is to go and move to the Silver Valley, let's go over the information that you're gonna wanna know to decide if the Silver Valley is the right place for you to live. As you already know, because I just told you, the towns in Silver Valley are really, really small. With Kellogg having 2,500 people, Wallace has 1,000, Pinehurst 1,400, Osborne 1,500, Mullen 810, Smelterville is just a few hundred. For those of you who've been living in a really big city, the idea of living in a really small rural town in Idaho probably sounds like a dream come true. But I can tell you there's certain things you need to consider before you decide moving to a really small town. The first being that after living there for a very short period of time, once you get to know people, everyone's gonna know your business. People talk, there's not very many people there. There's not a lot of things that are happening in those towns. So 
a lot of gossip gets spread around. For me, I like my privacy, which is kind of counterintuitive since I'm here on YouTube and now it seems like a lot of people know me, but I do like my privacy. I don't want to hear people talking about what's going on. I remember growing up in Post Falls before it got to be the size it is now, there were people in town that would, you know, maybe I made an idiot of myself at a party. Well, that would get spread around pretty quickly and I'd feel pretty stupid and I really didn't enjoy everybody knowing my business. The other thing you need to know, if you move to a really small rural town and you've got lots of money and you kind of want to show it off, you're driving a Tesla, you're driving a Porsche. There you go. Thank you, sir. There you go. Thank you, sir. There you go. There you go. There you go. People might treat you differently and it's not always gonna be a positive thing. People want to know who you are as a person, what your character is, and not how much money you have. So if you use that to project of how cool I am or you know how important you are, people will automatically put up a barrier and be defensive when you're trying to get to know them. It's not fair, but that's just how it is in small towns. The other thing you need to know, if you have children that are still going to school, the school systems are pretty underfunded because the towns are not very big and they don't have a lot of tax dollars. There's only one private Christian school that I could find in Shoshone County. So you're definitely going to want to be tutoring your kids if they are going to public school. Because as I've said in other videos, the Idaho school system ranks pretty low in the nation and it gets even worse in some of those small towns. So again, if you really do want to move to a really small town, just know it is going to be very, very different than what you've experienced living in a big city and it's not always positive sometimes it can be a bit of a pain in the butt it can get annoying there's not a ton of people so you just need to know if that's the lifestyle you want that's what you need to expect now for shopping and entertainment you do have the basic amenities throughout Shoshone County. You do have a Walmart with a pharmacy. You do have grocery stores. You do have little locally owned uh, shops and coffee shops and pubs, but there is no movie theater. You do have a playhouse where they'll put on local plays. There are no strip clubs, but there are 24, at least 24 different churches. I was Googling it and I could not believe how many churches are in Shoshone County. And that's pretty common. I mean, you, you had a small mining town, not a lot of entertainment. You want people to adhere to some kind of moral standard. Cause I don't know if you've ever met a miner, but especially miners back in the day, things could get a little bit rowdy. So we wanted to make sure that there was God in the picture and we wanted people to know Jesus is watching. So don't do that. You can get Amazon deliveries out in Shoshone County and there is high speed internet available. So you're not completely cut off and you can still get the things that you want. Plus you can always drive over into Coeur d'Alene where there's a Costco. And depending on where you are in Shoshone County, it's gonna be anywhere from 45 minutes to an hour. I almost forgot to mention, there's also the world's largest Dodge dealer in Kellogg, Idaho, which is super random. Kellogg is kind of in the middle of nowhere and you just drive through town and all of a sudden you see all of these vehicles and a lot of the property in that town is owned by Dave Smith because he stores his vehicles there. So if you need a new vehicle, you don't have to drive far. You can just go right there. Now, like I said, the main attraction out in the Silver Valley is the Silver Mountain Ski Resort. And I gotta tell you, one of my favorite things to do is to rent a condo at the base of Silver. At night, we go and play in the water park. They've got like a, a lazy river that you can float around. They've got one of those wave makers that you can ride aboard and act like you're surfing. It's a whole lot of fun. And then during the day, we're up on the mountain. They've got a really cool inner tube sledding hill, or they've got some killer runs that you can hit, um, including double black diamonds. They've got a really good snowboard park up there. So it is an absolute blast. Now, during the summertime, you can hit one of three golf courses in the Silver Valley, and Silver Mountain actually turns into a downhill mountain bike park that you can take the lifts up and, and ride. I've never done it. I've never done downhill mountain biking. I have one too many injuries to want to try that out, but I have friends that do it and they say it's absolutely awesome. Now, as far as eating out goes, Wallace, Idaho is definitely going to be the place that has the really, really good restaurants. There are good restaurants throughout Silver Valley, so you're never going to have to worry about, hey, where can we go to get something to eat? Because the, the towns are smaller, you usually don't have a very long wait to be able to get in. And of course, you are surrounded by mountains and wilderness, so there's plenty of hiking and outdoor activities in the summertime 
time as well as the winter. There's some really, really good snowmobiling trails. And especially if you just go right over state line, which isn't very far away, uh, there's really, really good snowmobiling out there as well as uh, Lookout Pass, which I forgot to mention. So you have Silver Mountain, and then you just drive about 40 minutes further and then you have Lookout Mountain. So you've got two different mountains within an hour. Now I've mentioned in previous videos that if you live in Idaho, you're gonna have to deal with wildlife from time to time. Go ahead and up that to all the time if you live in Silver Valley. As you can see, you are nestled in between the mountains out there. There is wilderness all around you. So just know, if you live there, you are gonna be seeing elk, you are gonna be seeing deer, moose, coyotes, bears, and I highly recommend you have your bear mace. Just keep it with you. Uh, even, I mean, in town, you don't have to worry too much, but if you wander out into the wilderness, you're gonna wanna have some bear mace. Now, some of you watching this might be wondering, Trent, why is your footage so dark? Why did you go during the evening to film this? I was not filming during the evening. I actually got out there at around 11 o'clock and by 2.30, 3 o'clock, it was already getting dark. By four o'clock, I could barely see anything. So that's another thing you need to consider. During the winter time, it already gets dark pretty dang early, but when you're nestled in the mountains in the Silver Valley, it's going to get dark even earlier and the snow is going to be sticking around even longer because it stays dark and because you have so much shadow and shading out there, you gotta deal with snow a little bit longer than normal. Now, let's talk about specifics that you really wanna know before deciding if Silver Valley is the right place for you to live. The crime rate out there is not bad. It's 18.7 out of 100 for violent crime and 31.3 for property crime, both being below national average. The school system, as I mentioned, is not gonna be very good. It ranks 75 out of 100 according to US News. And there's only one private school that I could find out there. So again, if you have kids, you're definitely going to wanna be active in helping them uh, be tutored or tutor them yourself. You don't wanna just rely on the school system. It's not terrible, they'll get their education, but it's definitely not gonna be up to certain standards that are set throughout the country. Now the homes throughout Silver Valley, Kellogg area, you, you're gonna have a lot of mobile homes as you can see. There's lots of condos. There are some newer homes, but not a lot. And you do have homes that are on bigger lots that have shops. Uh, you, you really have your mix, but the majority of them are going to be smaller homes that were built very early on. The condos are still very affordable at around 225, 250,000, but houses there they're going to be right around the same price as Coeur d'Alene a little bit cheaper but just know when you look up the median home price it can be kind of deceiving as you can see from the chart it looks like it's a hundred thousand dollars less than Coeur d'Alene but the fact is is there's so many mobile homes and condos that get sold out there that that brings the price down but a normal house even a, a house that hasn't really been updated you're still looking at about 375 all the way up to 475 and a house a newer house with a shop on property, you're still gonna be upwards of six hundred, seven, eight hundred thousand dollars $800,000. All right, now here's the really big bad issue that you have all been waiting for me to talk about. Do you remember how I said Silver Valley was built around mining and that it was the largest, most plentiful silver mine in the country? Well, the way that they got the silver was they were actually mining for lead. Silver is a byproduct of mining for lead. And it happens that back in the day, their filtration house burnt down and they didn't care to replace it for an entire year. And this was before they knew how bad lead was for people. So for an entire year, tons and tons of the heavy metals that are toxic were put into the waterway and just left to go downstream. In 1976, the Coeur d'Alene tribe, along with the federal government and the state of Idaho, sued the Bunker Hill mine and won $263 million to help with the cleanup. So according to the EPA, with 100 being the best, they rank it at a four as far as the cleanup goes. Now, according to the EPA, it is safe to live out there. It is safe to drink the water. 
but you definitely don't want to eat the fish and you don't want to be taking the soil out of the creek and putting it into your mouth. So that's quite a slogan, right? Welcome to Silver Valley. Valley, it's beautiful here, but don't eat the fish. So it's something that you need to know. And I know a lot of people are gonna be upset. Trent, why are you telling people about this? It is our responsibility, especially as a realtor. I have to tell people about these environmental concerns. It's something that would get brought up anyway. So before you get too excited going, that's the town I wanna live in, you need to know that happened in the history and it is a concern. According to the EPA, it's safe, but you still need to know about it. Now guys, you need to know, and this is honestly my true honest opinion, I used to hate going to the Silver Valley. When I moved here in 92, going to the Silver Valley, it just, they were rough towns. It had a meth problem. A lot of people were living under the poverty wages. It was really, really rough. And as this growth happens, and I start to see really cool restaurants and pubs and Kellogg turning into a resort town, it actually makes me feel really good knowing that people are moving out there, they are investing into the area because it's bringing life back to these towns. Like I said, after the mine shut down, the population was dwindling. And then the resort came and it helped but it was still pretty rough out there. So it's not that I don't want people to move out there or that I would tell you don't do it. I just need people to know this is what's going on out there. There was this environmental disaster that took place. They have done some cleanup. They're continuing to do cleanup. So you just need to be aware if you move out there, that is a concern. And personally, I'm now looking at investing into like either Kingston, which is just outside of Shoshone County, or in uh, Wallace or Kellogg. I think those places are pretty awesome. And I'm seeing what's taking place. And I think it is a really good investment because you do have so much wilderness. You do have the mountains and the ski resort and the water park. I think that it's a really awesome place to live as long as you're okay knowing that there was that disaster that took place. So what do you guys think? Do you think that I am over exaggerating the problem out there and making it seem like this is a really bad thing? Do you think I'm understating thinking that no, this is really serious and nobody should move out there? Let me know in the comments, guys. I do read those. And if you did like this video, make sure you give me a thumbs up. That helps with the channel, helps get it pushed out there. And like I said before, if you are serious about moving out here, please make sure you give me a call, shoot me a text or an email anytime. I love helping people get set up here in Idaho. I love seeing the growth because it really is making the state a better place. And until the next one, guys, I will see you later.